Thursday. Hey, what's up, guys? We're having errors with camera. Our camera went down. Our main cameraman is gone. Errors. But what is an error? We're gonna get this going. Is that like uh, some sort of uh, what's your name, Taylor Swift thing? Era? No. Paris. My kids are obsessed with Taylor Swift, my two oldest girls. I have seen that uh, live show like a hundred times now. So uh, stay patient with us, guys. Uh, we're going to be getting the other cameras up and running. But say hi. Tell us where you guys are watching from. Uh, we will have a special guest here in a little bit. But uh, yeah, what do we got here, Jay? Well, we got Isaac saying, hey, everybody. Yeah, we got Skid Gear here, obviously. Because he doesn't ever miss with it. This is the first time I get screen. to see this control panel. This is pretty uh, cool. He Let's wants play, to play a fun, fun game. game. What kind of fun bit, game would you play? That sounds like a uh, saw. Yeah. I don't like that. You want to play a game? <laughs> Let's play a fun game. <laughs> Spam the like button at 140 BPM. That's what he was saying. Oh, uh, I get it. I like I, it. That's his game. You would just keep. <clears throat> All right. And Steve's asking where are the zebra cakes. Ooh, they were eaten. I like zebra They're cake. gone. Yeah. Uh, we got Denial, Nadine. It's not That's just a cool. river no. in uh, Egypt. Uh, he's coming in as Jeremy Shepard's ride or die fan. What? Uh, he loves the TAS also, though. That's cool. Why, why new, uh, would he care about Jeremy Shepard? We got some Shepard. new folks. Uh, let me get this turned on, Trent. We had a last minute uh, battery death, yeah. which was kind of crazy. Uh, by the way, it is New Guitar Thursday. Yeah, I'm glad to be with worry. you. I'm John here at the Acoustic Shop. <clears throat> And when you get the camera, you'll be able to see me. But uh, right now, are they seeing so you, far. Jason, crooked? Is that what they're seeing? They're seeing the ceiling, really. <laughs> Hang on. Okay, it's coming back alive. <laughs> we run the most professional live streams in the world. Let's get this going. I wonder why it is nobody wants to do the same things we do. <laughs> uh, Trent, I don't have you yet. It's getting there. It's getting there. Getting there. Connecting. 
Connect please, him? please, 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 please. Ah, ah. What? Ready? Is it here? Ah, there it is. Oh, hi, guys. It is John here at the Acoustic Shop for New Guitar Thursday. Each and every Thursday, we will be joining you to talk about new stuff that came in, as well as old stuff that may have been here for a while. I don't know. No, it's New Guitar Thursday. We only talk about new stuff. Uh, like I said before, tell us where you guys are watching from. Please hit that like button. Every time, uh, is Tex on here yet, Jay? Have you seen him yet? Uh, Tex not yet. always is our guy to pay attention to how many people are watching versus how many people are liking. Hit those like buttons because it does make a difference. Every and channel says that, but it is actually the truth. Hey, we got Dal David Alexander. Says Jeremy, see you all over the place. Casino, your channel, now the acoustic shop. That's a perfect intro. Is it for a our intro? good friend? We got a special guest, everybody. And make Jeremy, welcome. Make welcome is Terry Shepard, my battery guitar died. hunter. <laughs> His battery <laughs> just died. My battery died. <laughs> <laughs> That's I love awesome. it. This is we did it! <laughs> hey! There he is! I think hey, we have hey, hey! Hey! Gosh. Well, yeah. What are the chances? You. I do not get to see you, by the way. So. Well, come over here. You can see Oh, me. so I'm just whispering in your ear. You're just whispering in my ear. I got uh, I have this new uh, monitor in here. I feel like I'm some sort of like hey. CIA agent. So... Wiretap established. <laughs> I got this pretty cool yeah. thing. Check that out, guys. The, uh, we got the split screen, three of the us. The eagle now. has left the building. The eagle has left the oh. building. <laughs> anyway. What have you been up awesome. to, Jeremy? Are you at home? I have been all over. Yeah, I was just with Casino Guitars last week, and I saw y'all were there not too, too long ago. Nope. Yeah. You had some, uh, yeah, you did shot some videos over there and uh, talked about... Did you get those guys to talk about acoustic guitars? Or is it just electrics? I did. We talked a lot about acoustic guitars, <laughs> which is surprising. I feel like you and I are cut from the same cloth uh, <laughs> of, like, acoustic guitars. I made a video recently called Acoustic Guitars Are Just Better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, I don't know if I I, I, I... I saw that video, by the way. I, I watched it. And I did also see the videos you did with uh, Casino. I... I am just not as a, much of an aficionado when it comes to electric guitars. I get them, I'll play them, mm -hmm. I get the ideas, but when you want to get the down, dirty, the nitty gritties of the little tiny things, man, I just, I'm lost. So. It's, yeah, I, I think overall there's a purity to acoustic guitars that I appreciate in which if a guitar sounds not good, there's not a whole lot you can do to change it with an acoustic guitar. And True. with an electric guitar, you can. There's a million things you can change and tweak. Yep. Yeah, there is. I, you can make a guitar mostly do what you want it to do in the electric world. So, you know. Yeah. It's just what it is. Anyway, today is New Guitar Thursday. We're talking about some new stuff that came in. Hey, you'll get a kick out of this, Jeremy. I got in a used Boucher. It was actually in here a while ago, uh, but it's made its way back in here. It is a consignment, uh, which is cool. How many used Boucher's have you seen, Jeremy? Zero. <laughs> well, I've got one. So Ooh. this is a uh, let me see, oh, SG man. 51 BV. So it's got a vintage pack and a burst pack. Uh, does oh, I thought it had a pickup. I felt it was, did, but it doesn't. Uh, vintage pack and a 51. So rosewood back and sides, maple binding. Um, I think this one is the inch. Yes, it's an SG, so it'll be an inch and three quarter. Uh, just a really beautiful guitar. Great sounding guitar too. So, hey, John, our good friend yeah, Jamie. That's a great uh, guitar. What are you asking for that? <laughs> oh. I don't know. I, you act like I'm supposed to know a price. Somebody, you know, Hinkley's on the computer. She'll probably be able to tell us what it's going to be here very shortly. We got so. our good friend here. Uh, he's in Botswana right tell now. Text really? me, he text said he me loves the... Peeps and Gallagher guitars. Is that true? Peeps it's not and true. Gallagher guitars. It's not. He's, he's That's not true. <laughs> do you? We talked about this yesterday. There was a question of the day. Do you like Peeps, Jeremy? I don't know. No. If I, if the if that's my answer, then no. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. You're 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 also a robust fellow like myself. Less less than myself. I'm... But you gotta enjoy the sweets almost probably as much as I do. I would assume. But like, well, it, but if but if I'm gonna eat sweets, I'm gonna do the real thing. Like I'm gonna do Reese cups until my eyes hurt. You know, like 
<laughs> it's just so your eyes hurt. Why I've be never sensible? I've heard of anybody eyes hurting from eating too many peanut butter cups. No. I don't know. There's a goal. Goal. Yeah. There is a goal. <laughs> hey guys, we got Derek yeah. Elder. Derek yeah. from Kansas City. He said he should bring down some of his pre war Martins and Gibsons for us to demo. Speaking of racist should. cups. Got me going here. This was a. Uh, who was it sent us this uh, again? Derek, come, come to me before Virginia? the acoustic shop. Virginia's closer no. than Missouri, right? He said Kansas City. Yeah, uh, we're closer. No, I'm sorry. Wrong. Hey, sorry. you know what we should do, uh -oh. Jeremy, is when you come He's down to visit, closer. when you're here to visit this year, which we're going to be doing that, we've talked about this, we'll set up Derek. Yeah. We'll say, go. Derek, come down when Jeremy's here. That'd be awesome. We'll all I've... just hang out and play guitars. I got my cup. Gosh, I love, love old guitars. Mm. Who doesn't? I like new guitars, too. Hey, John, we got West Coast Ray. Any more of those E3 specials with the Oven Call back and sides? E3 specials? Ooh. No, but E3 deluxes? Yes. Um, we have two of them we just filmed today with the new deluxe series from Eastman. Have you seen those yet, Jeremy? I have not. Oh, they're pretty awesome. They're all gloss finished. The oven calls look fantastic. In fact, I think I've got one of them here. Yes, no. Yes, no. Maybe. Um, Monkey sweeper. Yes, what up, Chef? Check this out. This is the new deluxe in a 222. So this has an oven call back and sides, but this was a special order that is already sold. But I do have, I think, an OM and a Dread that we uh, still have available. But oven call oh, under gloss burst. finishes look great. Look at that. I was trying to think. Like I don't, I can't name another guitar that's oven call that's gloss. Like all the tailors I've seen right. with them are pretty much all satin. Because it's always been kind of a more affordable option. But it brings okay. us out. I mean, look at that. You got flame. It almost looks like rosewood. Yeah. It's a little yeah. lighter brown. But yeah, the cool thing about this, the 222 is available in a gold burst, which is also super nice. They upgraded like this. That. It now has the Fishman Precis, which is a good upgrade. Okay. And, you know, it's all solid. So that's the new deluxes. In fact, all the ones, the 100 series, 200 series, the twos and threes. Oh now have a deluxe variant so roughly about oh, cool. That's 200 dollars more and they'll have a pickup upgrade and have a gloss finish and yeah it's pretty nice hey john yeah that's awesome jeremy shepherd's holding a guitar in his hand and i think he wants to talk about it all right what you got oh boy hang on <laughs> i mess with my, with my the opportunity to to you jeremy Come on, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> it was perfectly timed. Uh, this is my Zone Fleet. This guitar is handmade by a... Okay, things to know about this guitar. This is the second guitar from this builder in the world. Um, oh, it is Mammoth Ivory Inlay. It is a European spruce top. It's ma mahogany back and sides. Has, <clears throat> like... It's uh, the Sitka spruce inside, or the spruce inside is from a church from the 12th century, I believe. And the guy who built this guitar is 17 years old. I saw you had... A, so this a is from my friend album. Rasmus. This is my absolute favorite new guitar that I have. We just did an interview with the uh, Fretboard Journal on this guitar, and it's just so cool. Yeah, it is cool. Um, when I was 17, I was just busy picking boogers. Um, did nothing of any <laughs> yeah. serious consequence at all. <laughs> I know, seriously. Oh, yeah, I was 17, I had my hair dyed blue, and I was playing Bad Blink 182 covers. Yeah, I was I was better than that. Um. <laughs> it's true. It's true, I'm sure. Jeremy Chapman says the Boucher, the Boucher uh, SG-51 BV is selling for $39.99. All right. Oh, that, there you go. that's a great price. Yeah. It's super clean. Really great. I'm. Go ahead. So yeah, so this guitar it's a triple O eighteen spec. So it's like a thirty four Martin spec is where we started. Um, and we did this weird fretboard extension where we cut out like an Otis Taylor. Um, so it's kind of hard to see, but there's like a ramp down. And um, I'm debating putting a, an inlay on that bit of fingerboard there. Will you do it yourself? Breed, Breed Love did, or no. Miguel did that, didn't they? With that, with the extension, uh, and then they did a cool thing in there. Santa Cruz, Santa, Santa Cruz, Cruz did the Otis Taylor version. 
Very, very cool. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing one of those guitars one of these days. I know I saw the article, oh, yeah, I'll try the and... video, and I'd love to check out one of those because that's that's a pretty cool. He story. is building. Yeah, Rasmus is since that article. He's now building a guitar for Nora Brown. Do you know her? I she's think um, I think she's from Michigan. She's on tour in Europe right now, but she's like old timey gut string banjo drop thumb stuff, hmm. claw hammer stuff. Very cool. That's that very like cool. A cool yeah, deal. yeah. Um, I'll what show you, you another guitar there? that just came in. Just for the heck of it. This is an E40 OM, but it's a special E40. Ooh. I have one left, but I did find out that there's one more on their way from Eastman uh, that was found that was what? available. This is an E40, but it has a tone tight neck. So this has the Dana Bourgeois neck joint. Um, but look at the uh, all the bear claw in an Adirondack. Thermo cured Adirondack top, East Indian rosewood side. It's too back. bad it's so wide grain, you know. Yeah, <laughs> it's a bigger. That name. is remarkable. It sounds great. Bone uh, pins, uh, end pan. Uh, the other thing that's cool, since it is a tone tight neck, it has a very very similar neck to the Touchstone, so very veed. Interesting. Um, and I bet if I measured it, it probably comes in in the twenty three thirty seconds. Uh, inch and 23, 30 seconds, just like the Bourgeois neck. So just part of that collaboration with Eastman and Bourgeois. They yeah. got a few. This is not the spec that's supposed to there be built, but I had another one. This one just came in, and I got one more. So there you go. Everybody Those are great guitars. More. I played I played one of the slot headstock ones at IBMA at your booth, I guess, yeah. a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. And I was so impressed with the 40 series. Yeah. They really do pull out all the stops on that. Here's something since we're talking about the deluxes. I know we're in the Eastman zone right now, but I'm going to go ahead and cover those and then some other stuff. And then if you guys got questions out there of different yeah. guitars yeah. and things for me or Jeremy, please let us know. Um, one of the add-ons to the E1 series in the deluxe Ooh. was adding a 12 string. So this will come under $1,000. Uh... Bone nut and saddle, full gloss, so Pele back and sides, thermal cured, sick atop. That Again, is what the world needs. Uh, I thought it's supposed to have a pickup. I think it is supposed to have a pickup, but uh, this uh -oh. one doesn't, because this is the very first one. So, uh, yeah, look at it. has got flame neck. Look at that. That's crazy. That's great. Yeah. So, there you go. That was a new add-on, and this one is actually already so We pre-sold all the a bunch of the stuff from the NAMM show, and we're finally getting them in, so we'll be shipping those out very soon. So, what do the people want to That's talk exciting. about, Jay? Uh, no questions yet. Oh, man. I have a question. Sure. You guys are nerds for guitars. <laughs> is that a question? Yeah, it is. <laughs> what do you guys want to talk about? I'm start um, with a slanderous comment. Yeah, he's that way. We did get in uh, Elliot Capos. Those have made their way back in stock, so I do have some of those in stock. I got Somebody... a suggestion, John. Go ahead. It's been a while since it. Jeremy's been here. What's the What would be the guitar you want to show off and brag about in front of Jeremy? We all um, know we want to brag ooh. about guitars. What is the cool guitar? There's a bunch of cool stuff What do you want cool to see, Jeremy? Here. Uh, here's one that he would like. I know he would like this. This is a bourgeois signature, hey. but we customized it. So it's a DB signature, Madagascar. The cool thing about this one is I found this set that is perfectly Ooh. quarter sawn Madagascar rosewood. So it's not super pretty as far as you no know, crazy figures and, and swirls and all that, but it is perfectly mm -hmm. flat uh, quarter sawn Madagascar. And that's one of the things Dana loves is for sound wise to have the perfectly coarse mm -hmm. on stuff. And I stole this before he had a chance to even know it was in his wood pile. So uh, I figured with a DB signature, that's <laughs> what you do. So enlarged sound hole, quarter on Madagascar, looks, sounds yeah. great. Oh, good grief. Yeah, look at the curly co-op. That's the same. 
So the, the same sentiment was shared with me from Pierre at Boucher Guitars, and he referred to certain cuts as luthier's cuts. And he would talk about the really straight grained saying tone does or uh, figure does not equal tone. Exactly. And that quarter song stuff tends to sound a little better. Mm -hmm. That's definitely Dana's belief if you read any articles and all that. So like I said, when I found this set, it was funny, me and James were walking around and we looked at this particular set and he's like, uh, Dana hasn't seen this yet. And I said, well, then it's mine. Um, so <laughs> well, I took it. Sure he doesn't see it. <laughs> That's right. So then I took it and like I said, I thought the perfect pairing for it would be doing it on a DB SIG, um, which is Dana Bourgeois' signature. So that's what we did. Perfect sort of quarter sawn. Uh, Tell me about a, okay. Large sound, hole. large sound holes on a large sound holes on an OM. That's a mm -hmm. really unusual thing. I, can't I think actually of another that has that. like it better than I do on dreads. Um, it. So here's the deal. You're gonna hear all kinds Whoa. of puff, and I. This is what I believe. <laughs> What was that? I think we're losing Jeremy. Uh -oh. here. Jeremy, don't don't take off. Don't leave us. <laughs> Are you still there? Can you hear me? I do now. I'm here. All right, good. Don't move. Okay. Stand there I, with I your arms in a radial pose. For a large so you sound get better better on an OM. Why I think it's better? It pre projects more mid forward, low mid forward, um, and I think it really kind of gives it. I'm pretty low mid forward too. Yeah, I hear personally, you personally. <laughs> no, we were discussing that because we got in the new TAS guitars, and they definitely aren't big like low end cannons. They have this just rich tight low end with a forward mid so it kind of helps give it more definition especially for leads um and then finger picking and leads mm -hmm. uh you know for strumming i guess probably not quite as much of a advantage but i really think it gives you know like more definition in the individual strings Does that kind of makes sense so to you? Say. that's my theory that's it that's a great guitar it is a great hey, We got a question I knew for you'd like Jeremy that. actually here. Discellaneous. Right. Jeremy, did your Huss and Dalton ever heal up? Didn't it give damage in shipping? I don't know the story. Boy, did it get damaged in shipping. <laughs> um, so that guitar, uh, gosh, it's the only guitar I've ever had get completely, the headstock completely broke off in shipping. Um, so it went back to Huss and Dalton. It got a new neck. It got sorted. Uh, Huss and Dalton are great friends of mine, and they've been really kind to me. So it worked out that I got it fixed. Still waited about six months. But by the time, by the time it came back, there were some other factors that made it just have to go away kind of quietly. Oopsie. Um, so I love that guitar. It was a TDM from 2009. And it was it was great, but the they build necks a little differently. I liked that it had gloss on the old neck, and the new one had satin. And it just got in my head. And every time I thought about satin, I thought about this guitar had a traumatic end. So, yeah. So I got another. Moved on. I got another Jeremy Shepard. Uh, Before we do that, John. Guitar. Go ahead. Kyle's, Kyle Bell's Ooh. asking, Elliot, Elliot McKinney or Elite to go with his TAS guitar? The TAS guitar? I would go with the McKinney if you're going to do the TAS. I love the Elite. It's probably my, if you're going with function, I think the Elite Capo is the best out there. Uh, but it's a rice style guitar. You want to go with a rice style capo, the McKenny for sure. That's, All right. that's my opinion. Ronald Smith's asking how much for the E40 OM. What was the price on that? I want to say those are $29, $24.99. Will you look that up for me, Austin? The E40 that OM. Is so much guitar Jeez. for that amount of money. It is a lot of guitar. A thermo cured Addy top, you know. Gosh. All the abalone. Nick Boardwell's Please. asking a really good question, guys. Why is the Guitar Hunter visiting Jason's channel? Hashtag Jason Bass Project. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good question. You want to? Let's hang. <laughs> uh, $26.79 for the E40 OM TC. Say again? That is a lot of guitar. Absolutely. Yeah, Tex is here, guy. Hey, Tex. Texas. 
Tex is on almost Howard. every Guitar Hunter video and the Acoustic Shop. We always love having him in here. He is. So. I, yeah, man. Howard's become a, a fast friend over the years. Yes. He's got a guitar coming. We're building a uh, custom bourgeois. Um, that's going to be cool. Mike White missed out on the giveaway again. He was out inspecting my house today. He was checking it out, looking for the grade uh -oh. of the slope for me at my new house uh, when it gets done. All right, Atkin OM37, heavily oh, aged, shade top. This is Jeremy Shepard style. It's got all the vintage look and feel. Um, yeah, that tone. way you can bonk it on a coffee table and not feel right. bad. <laughs> and not feel bad. They did a really good job. Yeah. I do, I think, there's two companies that are doing a really good job with the heavy relic uh, finishes. I think pre-war does a fantastic job. I think yep. the Atkin is every bit as nice, in my opinion. Now, they're not quite as traditional build as what pre-war does because they do a bolt-on neck and do some other things, but it's got the look with a lot of the mm -hmm. modern kind of upgrades, thermo cube yeah. on the top, stuff like that. That's a beautiful thing. I would love to get an Atkin. Man, we've been seeing some great guitars. In fact, I just got an invoice for another one today. I think we're seeing a J43, I think. Which is the J43. That was my favorite last guitar. time I was there. Yep. I played what a J43, and it was an aged one when I was there. Yeah, I think it's a standard age. Now we're doing the heavily aged. They no longer do the mirror finishes. I know you saw some that have had their you know pristine finish he's now done with that he said wasn't selling enough of them so interesting okay so now here's it's my contentious opinion about relics okay i like you can find guitars that look like that over the years but i think overall relicking has we have lost touch with reality because of <laughs> relic guitars correct. you are correct and i don't mean that like it's just they don't look like real old guitars. So if I see a guitar that heavily relict, I'm thinking some sorcery has happened because, <laughs> you know, if someone bought this in the forties and owned it and loved it and took care of it, they would never bonk it so hard and scratch. Oh, the... You'd be surprised. <laughs> I've, I've seen, seen a bunch of guitars. Many man. worse than this. I had a buddy really? of mine. Look at this. I had a buddy of mine owned a D 18. It was a 37. And it had a knife mark in it here, right in the arm area. Somebody wow. threw a knife, and it was about <laughs> an inch and a half what wide. What a story. Missed his arm, I guess. Um, but it was chewed up. He and, didn't like that song. Yeah. <laughs> and Next. then I think I got away with it. I remember this because his guitar was also absolutely missing all finish in this area. They played just so mm -hmm. hard. So I think they missed this whole area, and that's why it didn't get his arm. Yeah. Right there. He nearly lost an elbow. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen guitars with 22 uh, bullet holes in them. Yeah. I've seen guitars yeah. that had Bondo to fix some of that kind of stuff. So, yeah. I've seen it, but well, yeah, I agree with you. Get into, you get into some of, and stuff. Yeah, some of the relic jobs I have seen look like somebody just took it with a cinder block and some uh, logging chain and just smacked the whatever out of it and go, hey, it's old. Check it out. Yeah, I'm yeah, not yeah, yeah. Much on that. Hey, well, John? That's what, um, the other thing that's hard is like if you get a clean like the mirror finish Atkin, you want it to look like it got beat up and old. The same, so the same thing happened. I had a '52 Tele reissue, and I couldn't afford a custom shop that looked like a worn out Tele. But what's so hard is when you go from brand new, and then you have the first couple things, it doesn't feel cool. It just feels like oh gosh, my guitar has real damage. It doesn't feel like mojo. It feels like damage. Yeah, I hear you. Absolutely. I got it. We got a good comment here, John, from Nick Boardwell. Okay. He says, time for the Irish guitars to make their way in. I need, and this is uh, capitalized letters, the square shoulder. The square shoulder. Iris. Iris. Oh, it's on its way. Yeah. Um, we Gosh. sold it. Uh, wait, I, I didn't realize y'all were selling Iris. Yeah. Uh, our first Irises mm -hmm. are coming. We had two of the brand new square shoulder dreads uh, that were built here. The first two, I believe are coming here yeah. and we sold one of them. I think the mahogany is still available 
And then we've got two slope Gosh. shoulder dreads that are on their way as well. And I need to probably put more behind them. So I'll be calling them this week. Okay. Um, but they're yes. supposed to be coming in April. Gosh, I, Iris, I had a DF a couple of years ago on a review. It was my favorite guitar of that kind. I, I think they're so fun and so likable. And uh, I'll tell, I, I'll text you. I've got news behind the scenes, secret news. About well, now Iris everybody's going to be mad because they don't know. That's the <laughs> point. We're trying to clickbait people. Oh, I got in trouble for doing that. He's, he's good at this, guys. Yeah, he's, a, he's a pro. Hey, I got a couple of Eastman questions for you guys, John. All right. Or Jeremy. Uh, Paolo is, I have a question. Paolo or Lewiski. I don't, I'm sorry, I can't say your name correctly. I have an Eastman ACTG2E travel guitar. It came equipped with light strings, 1253. Could I use medium tension strings on it? On that small scale, I mean, be aware that in a travel guitar, usually you have to use extra lights. Um, so being able to use the 12 to 53, I bet you could. It's got a dovetail joint. It's not a... I thought they said that you on. could use mediums on it. We're I have gonna, not We're not going to endorse that statement? I, do, I don't think they've said no, but... You can do what you want to do because it's your guitar, but you probably shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> I... I probably wouldn't on the short scale. I, I would I, probably, I, you know, I would put a bluegrass I gauge either. on it. I had, I had a Pono octave mandolin, and I put two heavy of strings on it, and I cracked the top. Ooh. So, That's and nice. that was just going up a medium gauge. Yeah. So, yeah, I, would I, would, say I would say, I mean, but a you might be able set. to play with other strings that are higher tension. Um, like, if you did the Santa Cruz higher tension, you could get the same gauge, but they'd feel a little stiffer if that's the problem. That would be good. Yep. Or like uh, String Joy. String Joy de definitely has higher tension, uh, mm -hmm. feels like to me anyway. Uh, yeah. So I would probably do that. That'd probably be a good option. There you go. Or that's you could probably choice. do a hybrid yeah. set. All right. Next question. Can you please play one of the E3 Deluxe Oval Calls? Do you have one over here? They are next door, door right? I believe. Let me double, I'll do, double check. I know we sold one or two of them yesterday. Guys, we've had a rush of guitar sales. Yesterday was one of our biggest sales we've ever had. I don't have a Dread. I have an OM in an oven called Deluxe. Well, he didn't ask but body size. He just said E3 Deluxe. Oh, Ovencall. well, I've got an OM. Well, then play it. There we go. Let's go back to the Jason Cam. I want to see your forehead. Why is this so hard? <laughs> hey, check this out. <laughs> Again, Three of them. Yeah. Yeah, I've been calling. <laughs> Look at that. Hey, i got to straighten my camera out. Tortoise binding on Man, these, the too. Nobody wants beautiful. to see that. I, I think they're really great. Um, This is really weird because I have that half second delay and for talking it's okay but playing music is awful. Yeah, isn't it? I'm gonna take this out for one second, okay? I'll let you know Jeremy talking. Okay, now at this point I can say whatever I want because John can't hear me. That's right. Did you see that thing on his face? Yeah. What is the deal with those shirts? I also, I found an old picture I almost used as a thumbnail, which is John and Bedazzled Blue Jeans, which was just one quick Google search away. That's true. He's selling all his old mech jeans. Who, me? Sorry, we weren't talking about you. <laughs> Don't worry. I'm not selling my wife is. What are you talking about? I have all my uh, uh, rock revivals for when I was cool. I'll take them. <laughs> <laughs> what if I what if I just what if my new persona was looking like John from ten years ago? That would be the worst move you ever <laughs> made. Can you spell mistake? I mean I'm already married. What's the worst <laughs> that can happen? <laughs> like you'd get it she would be unmarried. 
That's what would happen. <laughs> oh, right. That's an option. Hey, John, did you find the radius on the TAS guitar? Did I did not have out? a chance to yet. No. I felt like a 16. Well, there, Kyle's wanting to order that capo, so we're going to get it right for him. Oh. Uh, you still got some time. Yeah, Kyle. <laughs> we're not probably going to ship those guitars. The first one's probably for another three weeks, if not four. Uh, I just want to keep that closer together. Um, we only got in a few, like three or four. Um, and the first three, we're keeping. So, And yeah, then Austin that. already laid claim to one, I think. Yeah. So. Ooh. Hey, Daryl's asking, have we ever heard of Bean Blossom? Of course we have. Yeah, we that's played a big festival. Heard of them? Yeah, Jeremy knows it. That's a that was Bill Monroe's festival, Bean Blossom, Indiana, back home again in Bean Blossom, Indiana. That was their slogan. Did you know that, Jay? I did. Back in the seventies, every stop major talking. folk stop and bluegrass stop talking. Stop band talking. played it. <laughs> Christopher Kino is asking a question for the TS and or Guitar Hunter. You guys ever played or sold a Judy Threat, the guitar Tracy Chapman plays? Any out there? Never anywhere? even heard of it. No, that. never heard of that. Have you heard I'm of sorry. it at all, Jeremy? Yes. No. no. I mean, no. <laughs> I could fake it like I did, but I didn't. I love, I love it when he get. He went. I mean, no. <laughs> that was good. I like well, I'm, that. I'm like racking my brain. I'm racking no, my I, brain of like all those times I've been like Carter, even heard that. Yeah. Hmm. Sorry. Uh, Steve's I do. I do a thing Nelson's where I like. Count as relict? Uh, it's like yeah. as relic as it can get. Well, hold on, but isn't he put, they made a replica that was relic, but his is like real play. That's what I was going to say. But there is hilarious if uh, if he doesn't really play his old guitar, but he has a relic version of it that everybody's like, it's like uh, when Paul died and they replaced him. (laughs) (laughs) Or uh, or Hinkley says it's... Jason uh, just gets it, you know? What's uh, (laughs) up? What's up? Skater girl. Well, uh, no, but that's, that's the big one with... Well, that's the big one with Slash. So, like, Slash? Slash is Les Paul that he played for, like, Appetite for Destruction and all that stuff was a copy. Like, it was a replica, I think. <laughs> and then he got a real Gibson after a record or two came out. But even now, the last couple of years, he's been playing, other than Greeny, he's been playing replicas of his old guitars. Wow. So, it's this whole, like, you get into, like, essentialism, like, is it actually the thing, or if it's totally the same, or is it him Everybody's playing? That's what they're doing. It doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. All right, Bill Diedrich has a question for you, Go, Johnny. Bill. Uh, John, have you ever played a LDBO Bourgeois, same guitar Sierra, whole uh, own good players? Uh, so I played the one that they were sending to Sierra. Um, there's a new oh. version. We also had one that was really cool. It was called the Blue, LDBO Blues, maybe? It was all mahogany L double O from Bourgeois. One of my students has it. Coolest sounding and looking uh, L double O I've ever seen. All mahogany, but it had a white owl, uh, um, I, ivroid. White owl, ivroid <laughs> uh, pick guard. You'll get there. Looked Keep going. super cool. Because they use kind of that really dark, dark brown finish. Uh, mm-hmm. And having that white pick guard with the white binding. Uh, Ivoroid binding. It was super mm-hmm. cool. Super, super cool. Hey, Man, cool. Yeah, I would be, yeah, I, I love L double O's. I want a century of progress. They're not that crazy expensive anymore. I don't know that. Tell me about that. It was made for the world, for the world fair in like what, 1934 or 35. Okay. Uh, but it has like an Ivoroid fingerboard as well. Uh, um, so it's an Ivoroid bridge and Ivoroid fingerboard. It doesn't sound great because plastic's not a good tone wood, but they look awesome. Who (laughs) says? Hey, this is a good question for Jeremy. I'm ready. Skid Gear's asking, can Jeremy tell us about that big square guitar in the background real quick? Hey, of course I can. Uh, This is one of my favorite guitars. Uh, Hang on, I've got to take my ear out. Now, John, you say things about me I can't hear. Well, <laughs> my ear plugged out. I would Why's never that do that to you. T-shirt? I would be nice. <laughs> He's the guitar hunter. <laughs> He's out hunting the guitar right now. He got a gun. And they and shoot Jeremy. It. And then Jer- Jeremy, can you believe Jeremy actually called me up as like <laughs> he's talking about guitars? I can't believe Jeremy. Oh, hold on. He's back. What? Shh. Shh. 
I missed. I heard nothing. Uh, this is a boxwood guitar. This is made by my friend Steve in San Diego. Steve Danes makes these. And um, they're beautiful. And of course, they're silly looking, but it's really top spec. So his strategy is he doesn't want any tone wood to go to waste. And so there's lots of pieces of wood that are too small to make dreadnoughts or too small to make most guitars. Hmm. So this guitar is um torified adirondack spruce that came from the martin custom shop and then on the back it's sinker mahogany that is left over from the run of grun's sinker uh guitars but it's the wrong shape to make a dreadnought so what his thing is just leave it long and um you can get the same volume of a guitar so this is like a d18 basically but it's a it's a very goofy shape it's probably a uh, conversation with Bob Taylor about that, and he was talking about the genius of guitar shapes. And Martin, as in his opinion, has been the only person that could really make the dreadnought look right. And he thinks that hmm. was perfectly drawn shape, even when they did it. He said it wasn't right, but it's all about the curves and drawing the line. Interesting, uh, yeah. For that, it was a really cool conversation. I, I enjoyed that a lot. Remember that, Jason? We did yeah. that at the fretboard oh. sermon. No. Jason Jeremy, are you coming remember. to the fretboard summit? I am. I was talking to Jason after doing the interview. Um, I meant to come last year, but I didn't, and I don't remember why. Well, we'll be there. But we'll maybe. See, yeah. yeah, it'll be it'll be really fun. <laughs> we never know where we're gonna be. Hey, I'm gonna John? open up a brand new box. This one's from John, Breed Love. Question first. Go ahead. Yeah. Is the Yamaha FS830 TBS Spruce Rosewood Tobacco Sunburst available? I don't have an FS. Do I? Yeah, I do. It's right there. 830. I think it's right there. I think it's right there. Is that right? FS 830. Yep. This is it. Right here. It's available. It's right here. Rosewood sides and back. Solid spruce top. These 830s are great guitars. At their price, huh? We have one in Sunburst as well. All right, we have both in stock. Three forty-nine. Hmm. Yeah, they're great guitars. I was really I'll surprised. I'll sell it to you for four hundred and twenty-five. If I can buy it from them, and then I'll ship it to you. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Do that. I'm thankful that like. So here's another thing from the electric guitar world: is like rampant flipping of gear doesn't seem to happen as much in the acoustic world. You're right. But you know, you'll get a pedal that comes out for a hundred bucks, and then they show up for two hundred and fifty on reverb. <laughs> Nate Mink, we uh, did not unbox any bourgeois, but we played a few. I, I won't lie to you that it actually does happen in these. I'll show you. I've got a guitar to open here. It's a Thompson that just came in yesterday. <gasps> you want to talk about flipping for higher? I saw guitars yeah. that I've sold that's put right back on the market for more than I sold it for. But whatever. Mm. Whatever. Brand new color from Oregon. This is a uh, limited release. This is the new Lagoon series uh, done for uh, Earth Day. This is the new Earth Day color. Uh, oh, I saw model. this. Yeah, we had this at NAMM. I like this color. I'm a blue guy. Yeah. No, I've never owned a blue guitar. I love it. Um, but the color is killer on this. Oh it's a gosh, cool that's fade. cool. Speaking of that song, Jeremy, did you hear the Cleverly's do that? Blue. Um, you know blue, the Cleverly's, Jeremy. Abba dee, abba da. I you know the Cleverly's? No. They do all the cool old songs. You would love them. Yeah, you'll love the Cleverly's. Bluegrass covers of hip Wait, pop songs probably, yeah. from the 90s, 2000s. Yeah. That's awesome. Rock tunes. I remember you would, you'd dig it. the most clever name I ever heard was Hacy Dixie. Yeah. They that was did also all ACDC band. coverage. Yep. Had uh, Ronnie Reno. You guys probably that. knew those guys. Yeah. Ronnie Reno was playing mandolin in that band. In fact, I think Don Wayne also played there for a while. Yeah. Um, and the Renos, in case you don't know this, they're from down your direction, not quite in your area, but Don Reno was one of the very first banjo players, and he actually played the original Dueling Banjo soundtrack. It was Don Reno... Um, before the soundtrack, Wait, sorry. I knew that. Original yeah. Dueling Banjos. 
But he was playing with, he traded banjos with Earl Scruggs, um, which a lot of people didn't know. Hey, I got a couple of questions we can answer real quick. Uh, Dave Yarber's asking, do you have to be in the industry to attend the Fretboard Summit? You do not. No. No, you can be guitar nut, just like the rest of us. Skid Gear's asking, will you guys have the Cleverly's play at your shop one day? Well, they've been here multiple times. We've got lots of video twice. on the channel. We did interviews with them. You got to search done. up this video on our channel where they tested out guitars. It was great. <laughs> By screaming into them. It was great. You know what I got to do? I keep forgetting. Paul called me three days ago, said he wants to buy one of the new E1D Deluxes. And I was supposed to send him pictures so he could buy it. Three <laughs> days ago and I didn't do it. Paul, I'm sorry, buddy. He John, have you ever met walking. Gary Burnett in North Carolina? I know the name. Martin Gibson's apparently a... Bill Diedrich saying he has a lot of pre-war Martin. Yeah, I think he's the guy that had the one that uh, Kenny Smith just did the video of, if I remember right. Maybe. Maybe. Jeremy, do you know him? I have heard of him. I've never met him. Mm. All right. Back to you, John. Anyway, all Myrtle Wood, super cool guitar. So Myrtle Wood top, too? Yeah. Yeah, Myrtle Wood top, Myrtle Wood backsides. There, you'll see a lot of that from cool. Breed Love. They're doing Myrtle on pretty much everything because it is an Oregon uh, wood. Yeah. And it's sustainable. It's got some really cool tonal characteristics. Mm -hmm. And it's fun to say. You're right, Corey. <laughs> Corey yeah. goes, it's fun and to it's name fun your daughter to say. After. <laughs> Myrtle. Hey, Myrtle. Hey, Myrtle. <laughs> <laughs> I, man, I, I do wish that that guitar had a wing bridge. You're, every once in a while, they will do a retro wing bridge. You know what? You and I think it's cool. There's a lot of people that don't. Uh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. All right. But that's, yeah, that's true about a lot of things. I think a lot of things are cool that other people don't. <laughs> Myself, Jeremy, I think, I think you're cool, cool but a lot people of people don't. don't. <laughs> yeah. I think each other are cool. <laughs> I'm just playing. I, you, how can you both be wrong and right at the same time? At the same time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Thompson build. This is for my good friend, Stan Hall. We custom built this. And it's funny, it came in pretty much the same time as the new TAS guitar. Large sound hole, but we did a few things. We put a light age toner on an Adirondack. We did pick out the Madagascar. Look how beautiful that is. Black Good ribbons. grief. Uh, beautiful. Uh, gorgeous neck shape. We took the Thompson Pearl logo, put it on the Ooh. back, and then did a matching front peg head, and added my favorite Thompson feel, which is the purfling through the fretboard, all the way through the peg head, continued it on. That's I love cool. doing custom guitars, but I love them with Thompsons, and, and Stan's been a great customer, a lot of fun to, to work with. This is, I think, his second or third guitar, second guitar, I think we did a mandolin and a banjo, and. Yeah, great. I agree with Skid Gear. It says, if you don't hit the like button, it means you eat peeps and park crooked. Oh, it's true. I got to pull that earpiece again. I think Billy Strings is probably one of the biggest influences on why Thompson has gotten so big. If I'm honest. Yeah. My favorite lick here. It's great. It messes up it's Corey just every time. Jarring day. to the senses. <laughs> it's jarring. Corey's gonna start. Have you started doing it yet? Yeah. Yeah, he did. <laughs> Corey, I, I, I started doing it all the time about a month ago, and Corey's like, dude, I can't stop. Stop doing that. And I said, I guarantee <laughs> you, you're gonna start doing it. And I just asked him, and he said, yeah, he's doing it. Hey, John. Yeah. Jeremy, Jeremy brings up a good question. Point. Are you done? <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> Uh, and, and Daniel Denial. Uh, he says he thinks that Thompson, a big part of their success is because of Billy Strings. What do you think? Without Billy Strings, where would Thompson be right now? Ah, uh, no, I think this is my theory. You ready? Is it hot? Jerry, put out the graphic. Come on, do it. Hot take graphic. 
Somebody flash the lights. Somebody, nobody, we don't uh, have the hot takes. Dude, I've got 17 right, screens here's the up right now. I ain't got <laughs> hot takes. Here, here's my hot take. I think that it has definitely made the price of Thompson guitars go up dramatically. I think they were building great guitars yeah. before uh, Billy Strings was oh. involved. Uh, I mean, what, like six years ago, you could pick one of these up for two or three thousand dollars less than they are now. Part of that's the market and all that kind of good stuff too. But I do think Billy, as well as Molly, raised the interest for Tom mm -hmm. Thompson guitars, and now they are crazy expensive. That, and the fact that like this guitar, I put this order in. It's been over two years, wow. if not two and a half. This was scheduled to be done in September. No, October. We were supposed to have it done, and it just arrived yesterday, day before yesterday. Wow. So, yeah. So, That's okay, because I think one of the things that they've done that has been amazing is the fact that they've had such an influx of orders, but the quality has stayed as good, if not better. A friend of mine here in town has a Madagascar Dread that mm -hmm. is remarkably good. Yep. Um, and so the fact that they've navigated that is great, in addition to that huge surge. I've got one coming that is supposed to be my personal guitar. Here's the problem. Oh. Jeremy and Jason don't pay me enough to be able to afford it. But I've customized it. It is gorgeous. Brand new torch that is for our 10th anniversary as well as their 10th anniversary. The Madagascar I picked is incredible looking. Uh, we did vo voiced a special top for it. Did a few cool things. Not over the top things, but it's another D Mad Addy. It should be the next guitar coming here, and I'm gonna say, well, I, I'll say three months, but okay. it's probably gonna be like nine. Man, <laughs> so do you still have? When I was there last time, you had just gotten, was it a? It was a Bourgeois Large Sound Hall. Mm -hmm. Love it. Yeah, you still got that one. Yep, I do. I play that one all the time, and it's what okay. inspired. I thought so. The new TAS 58957. Do you know anything about that? I suspected that. Yeah. It, it's cool because we got Dana involved and he helped spec out and get this built for us, the new guitar. So I'm pretty excited about that. Oh, I want I want to try one so badly. They're all sold, buddy. Mm -hmm. Sorry. You can see mine. I know, I figured. By the time <laughs> yeah, by the time they were We we literally yeah. sold all 35 of them in less than a week. All prepaid. That's for, amazing. Yeah, it was good nuts. Work. Originally, we were only supposed to get 30, and we sold those out in four days. And so I called them up and said, got to get me some more guitars. They said, I'll get you five more. And we finished the rest of those off hmm. that week. So Wow. And the crazy thing is, the only thing Remarkable. that anybody saw was just a prototype. Jay? It's just the trust yeah. they have in you. The un... <laughs> Justified, unverified <laughs> the trust. Blind that trust that people mm -hmm. had. <laughs> I'm sorry. It All ended right. up, it turned out great. These these guitars sound fantastic. Um, and they're going to look okay, at yeah. when I get all the stuff in. So, Yay. All right. Man. Well, there's some Billy String slander going on down Stop. here. Jamie is not a fan. Stop. He's a he, great uh, guitar player. He's a great dude. He is a great dude. He, he, did uh, you see that video how Billy Marcel Strings did? His peeps. Which one Marcel did? He did one about how people now making fun of Billy Strings is the same thing that happened when Oh Brother Where Art Thou came out and people fell in love with yeah. bluegrass in the early 2000s. True. And there's just always, whoever the new one is, they're going to take the most heat. And... I think this is with any traditional small genre of arts in any way, shape, or form. You're the greatest thing until everybody thinks you're the greatest thing and then not so much anymore. Uh, yeah. we, we talked about this before, haven't we, Jerry? Jay? Yep. The same thing happened to Alison Krauss when she. I remember there. that. It was I'm yep. mm -hmm. Mr. You know, Beverly Loves Bluegrass, and now we hate her. That's Please, why I, I don't, like I've I never love her. I've been around oh, the bluegrass yeah. world for 20 years, but I never feel like I belong. Um, you know, just where I'm like I don't know, like I'm not really in it, but we it does. For there's a, there's a level like of belong, yeah. gatekeeping. We played festivals for 30 years and we didn't belong. <laughs> That's totally it's a untrue. Trick sometimes. Anyway, uh, I think it happens though in other genres too, though. Don't you think, Jeremy? Like 
the small blues genres and stuff. I, I remember, I do remember I, yeah, this I back in, in the early in the, 2000s. The hardcore scene. Uh, what was John Popper, uh, Blues Traveler? They were playing small yeah. venues. We played a couple of them with them, small venues, and everybody's like, "This is the greatest thing that you ever seen. This is this is these guys are great." And then all of a sudden, they became a huge pop sensation, and everybody's like, "They sold yeah. out, man. They ain't the real thing no more," you know. Mm-hmm. So, That's uh, a, I grew up, up in the, the I grew up in the up. punk rock and hardcore scene. Yeah, yeah, and one of the things about that scene is that like people have this tattooed on them. It's like in the straight edge scene. The phrase is, "If you're not now, you never were." And so it's like your identity at any moment, if you ever are not straight edge or hardcore, then none of it counts. Okay. And it's just such a hard, yeah. That's another scene I never felt like I totally fit in. I'm like, I like the music, but that seems mean. I have a really hard time when you guys bring up uh, Booze Traveler without me uh, wanting to do the rap. I want a young ring a ding ding and Suck it in, suck it in. Oh, gosh. This is... I'll do it. I remember it. <laughs> I memorized oh that. Oh my was kid. goodness! All right, guys. All right. Uh, Nate Meeks asking, "What is the TAS five eight nine five seven? It is a special edition guitar we had built for our tenth anniversary. It has Madagascar rosewood sides and back. Special edition. It Eastman has a large guitar. sound hole. Eastman. Eastman yeah. guitar. Yeah. Uh, with some other cool appointments that we kind of added to it. Um, and the coolest thing about it is there's only 35 individual serial numbered, one of 35, two of 35, all the way through. And um, signed. Mm. My hand and signed, signed by us. I have a special label. And sold for $27.99, which was a heck of a buy on a special edition guitar. Um, just to get those That's specs awesome. under $3,000 was nuts. So... Mm-hmm. That was cool. So that's all right, it guys. It seems like everything's slowing down. We've got lights. No more fighting. No more fighting. <laughs> it's been fun. Yep. We're right at an hour, so I think we've used enough time. I appreciate Jeremy, Jeremy being here. To back to. This is Thanks, good man. This was you. so fun. Yeah. We didn't we're know we could more, do this until we? just today. So can look at Jason with all his technological wonders. Hey, quit talking about <clears> it. Can we do this again? Yes. All right, that's the plan. <coughs> sure. All right, everybody say goodbye. Just keep sending the big, those big checks. We'll send the big checks, Jeremy. <laughs> All right, everybody All right. say goodbye. Good seeing you, Jeremy. Uh, thanks all for joining me on Guitar Thursday. Uh, and Jeremy Shepard. If you haven't already done it, hit that subscribe button for Jeremy Shepard, the guitar hunter. Hit it for ours too first. I would appreciate that. But yeah. uh, go check him out. Uh, lots of cool content on lots of cool guitars. Um, and we will be back here on Tuesday, Jay? Yeah, Tuesday. Yes. Take over Tuesday day. So Derek says, Jeremy, let him know when he comes down. He'll bring those guitars for us to play. There you go. Uh, okay. Daniel is we'll, asking, we're working on dates. streaming tomorrow? We'll figure something out soon. Are you stringing them tomorrow? I am not, because it's okay. Good Friday. Yes. Oh, it's true, yeah. All right. That'd be a good reason not to. Goodbye, Happy guys. Happy Monday, Thursday. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Good weekend. See you guys. Have a great one. Great weekend. Happy Easter. <laughs>